cornflakes are freaking good. So, wow. Hmm. Uh -huh. Oh. Wanna tell me what you're doing with my cornflakes? Make a Blaze Blue video. I'm already making like a bunch of Blaze Blue vids. You want more? Hell's to the year I want more, but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you should make a Blaze Blue tutorial video. You know how many people have been asking for those type of videos? Ah, you want me to make a tutorial. Why do you always show up at the weirdest times? Oh, me? Like... Why did I show up right now, right now? <laughs> well, you see, um, well. Dude, the last time you were here, it was like when Extend was very first announced for the arcades or when it first got released. Uh, yeah, let's not worry about that. What you should be worrying about is doing that BlazBlue tutorial. Want me to make a BlazBlue vid? Like a tutorial vid? Well, duh. I would have messed with a brother's cornflakes if it wasn't important, you know? All right, all right, all right. Awesome. This is going to be dope. For those of you watching, you guys better thank me. Real damn cornflakes, though. Never steal a man's cornflakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going everybody? Welcome to the Blaze Blue Central Fiction tutorial. This is a video targeted towards mostly beginners or people that never played a fighting game and they want to play Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Either they picked it up for the holidays or maybe they saw it and they're like, oh, I want to get that game. And this is for you, mostly. I will be doing more advanced tutorials in the, in the future, like character specific uh, tutorials or guides. Uh, I'll probably be bringing on some people that know how to play the characters at a competitive level and come teach us, and uh, especially me, uh, and also yourself. So that'll be in the future. Um, I'm still new to making tutorials and guides, so I'm kind of getting the feel of it to see what's what I can do in the future. But this is mostly a, a tutorial for, for beginners and stuff. Uh, the skits that you saw earlier, uh, I've done them before for other Blaze Blue videos. Now they're coming back. Mostly for these type of guide tutorials, okay? I will be doing tutorial, like character specific tutorials. Uh, I won't be doing skits every time, just for like the big videos like this one. So expect more of those in the future. And uh, let's get into it. This tutorial is actually broken up into three parts. Uh, three parts. Uh, the first part will be keep picking up your character and learning like the mentality of when picking up a character in Blaze Blue. Also, the second part, like learn, getting to know the your character's movements and stuff. And we'll go over that. And then the, the third part is how to get better with your character, essentially, and uh, how to get better in Blaze Blue as well. So let's get right into it, guys. Let's see uh, what you guys can take from this tutorial. Hopefully, you guys can take from this tutorial. Let me know if things I missed and things I can improve on because I really do want to do some cool tutorials and guides and stuff. And who knows? Maybe in the future, I'll be doing edited tutorials and guides like really nicely edited guides uh, this is just gonna be raw you and I hate talking about blaze blue stuff uh, in these three parts okay so let's get right into it guys take it easy everybody let's get into the tutorial Welcome to part one, guys. This is going to be a beginner friendly or people that don't know about the game or have picked up the game. I know a lot of people have picked up the game recently and have never played a Blaze Blue game. Um, and if you have, thank you very much for picking up the game. This tutorial is going to be dedicated towards you guys. The, um, like I said before, the people that have picked up the game for the holidays or for whatever reason and don't really know how to get into it whether they don't have any fighting game background or they do i'm gonna kind of help you 
and give you a general plan as to what to do when you in the beginning phases of blaze blue so definitely um this is for you guys and hopefully you guys like it um it's gonna be three parts like i said before this is part one so uh just like any other fighting game you look through the roster and you pick your character that's how you begin your journey into the, into a certain fighting game you have to pick a character that you like for you to work towards a goal for you to get better with that certain character and so on and so forth now there is two different ways to approach this okay you can approach this with the way of i would like to learn the mechanics of the game i would like to learn the game itself before i pick up my favorite character or you can pick up your favorite character at first and learn with that character and learn the system with that character i'm a believer in both uh, aspects of of uh, learning the game uh, but my recommended way is definitely to learn the game first then learn your character okay you can do it both ways like i said but that is the most recommended way to do it reason being is because any anime fighting game is kind of difficult to pick up a certain character or to do well with a certain character if you don't really have an anime background um, anime fighting game background um, for example you can pick up a character like ragna and do really well with him and then all of a sudden you switch to a character like let's see um carl which is completely different from ragna and uh that can be a difficult in itself those are with uh with people that pick up different characters that are completely different from what they usually play those are the people that really understand the mechanics of the game and know how to kind of do a lot of things uh with the game without actually using their dedicated character um so for the sake of the tutorial i will be going with ragna um, if you guys do like to pick up another character, of course, more than happy to. This kind of uh, attracts to anyone using any character. Like, for example, you could be watching this tutorial, be playing Blaze, but at the same time I am. I could be using Ragna, and you could be using Jin or Lambda or Mai, whoever you want. So, no worries. If you guys do want to pick up another character, that's completely fine. Um, also, another thing before we get into the training room is that there are beginner friendly characters and there are non beginner friendly characters a beginner friendly characters would or characters like ragna like Jin, like mai like hibiki like s um, a lot of characters like that are pretty beginner friendly uh for the first time um playing this game and then after that you start to get into non beginner friendly characters a little bit more advanced and they require a lot of lab work or a lot of training training mode um, characters like Rachel characters like Tao like Carl uh, Makoto Lychee Platinum all these characters they require a lot Naoto all these characters require and there's more than that what I just named there's more of these characters that require a lot of work compared to others so just a little bit of a <laughs> insider tip as to when you pick up your character that's uh that's one of the things you should keep in mind so let's get into the uh, training lab guys so now that you guys have picked your characters and are ready to learn the game whether it be through your, your the game itself or your character hop into training lab and you're ready to go Let's get this started. Oh, yes. And before I start, uh, I want to talk about notations. Um, if you guys have even seen any f anime fighting games or have talked to anybody um, that is in fighting anime fighting games, you guys will probably hear them say 2A, 6A, 4A, just numbers before buttons. And some a lot of people have asked me, it's like, what is that? What are what are those? Uh, why are they putting numbers behind everything? Well, I'm going to tell you what what those numbers mean, okay? If you take a look at the number pad, uh, I'll probably put it somewhere up on the, on the screen. Uh, that number pad actually represents the joystick and the, the direction that you're going to be pressing. For example, if the, if the joystick is in neutral, that is a 5. That represents 5 in there. So, for example, if someone says 5A, which is 5 with the, the button A and 5, that is neutral A. That means we don't press the direction, we just press the button. That's it. That's 5A because it's in the new, the joystick's in the neutral position. If someone says 2A, that means it's crouching. That means because we're pushing the joystick down. 
that's a 2A, uh, which is crouching A. Uh, that's usually what they mean. Um, and so on and so forth, okay? back Walking backwards, that's 4. Holding forward, that is 6. Jumping neutrally, that's an 8. Jumping forward, that's a 9. Jumping backwards, that's a 7. That's what the numbers mean when you guys see, like, 5A, 6A, 6 this, 6 that, you know, 4 this, 4 that. That's what that means, and uh, it's a, it's, I like it a lot. When I first started playing Blaze Blue, I didn't get it at all either. Like, why in the, why in the world? Why don't you just say crouching and everything like that? Um, and it's true. Um, I would like, <laughs> sometimes you, when you start, you know, you know doing distortion uh, movements with uh, the notations, that's when it gets really weird. But for the most part, like, with designated buttons, like 6A, that is easy to kind of, like, label. That, that oh yeah, that's just 6A. But anyways, that's beside the point. So those are the notations that I that I want to talk about. All right, let's get right into it. When you boot up training mode and you have your character and you want to learn the character and everything like that, you have to learn their buttons, okay? Blaze Blue is a four-button fighter. It consists of A, B, C, and D. And also, different moves consist of different combinations. For example, if you press B and C, you get your grab. If you press um, A and B, you get barrier. Uh, well, if you're if you're blocking, I'm sorry. If you're blocking and you press B, A and B, then you get barrier. If you just press neutral A and B, that's a crush trigger, which means that they uh, they get their guard broken. Uh, your opponent gets their guard broken if they're not if they're blocking. Uh, and if you press all four of them at the same time, you initiate uh, the overdrive or a burst. And I'll go over those later. But anyways, it's a four-button fighter, but the game also consists of combinations of all four buttons. So, just to let you guys know. And that, oh, uh, uh, that's right, I forgot that uh, there is also a taunt button. Uh, it's a designated button. It's not a button combination. Uh, so, if you do want to taunt people, you're going to have to des <laughs> assign that to a button. So, that's the basis of the, the buttons there. When you're learning a character, you have to kind of know what the buttons look like. Because if you go into a match and you're playing your designated character or the character you really want to play and you don't know their buttons um, or what their buttons look like or what they could do, stuff like that, you're going to get blown up by the other person. So I suggest you go into training lab, uh, the training mode, figure out your buttons. Like That's how my 5A looks like. It's got decent range. Look how far it goes. It goes pretty far. That's actually better than at the average jab. Um, also 5B, 5B. If you if you know Blaze Blue and, and Ragna, you know that people uh, complain about his 5B because it's so long. I think they nerfed it in this version, but for the most part, that's his. That's what his 5B looks like. Um, look at 5C. Look at 5 5C has really really good range, so you can use it in the mid screen and in uh, neutral. Look how far it goes. Stuff like that that you have to kind of figure out. It's like, oh yeah, that that's a button that I I want to do. That I would like to use in the neutral. And the neutral, that's something I'll explain later as well. Anyways, um, you also have to explore your jumping buttons. What's your, what's the button that you're going to be, when you jump, what are you going to press when you jump in? Um, some buttons cross up. For example, if you're at this range right here and you jump over and you press a certain button, they cross up. Um, and the opponent has to block that direction, uh, which you're hitting from. Uh, some buttons can't. Some buttons can, uh, for example, that one, five uh, jumping C can cross up in certain situations, but some really weird ones though. Like, you have to really. Anyways, for but for the most part, it doesn't really cross up. Uh, but jumping B does cross up, and some characters have cross up, some characters don't. It all depends on the character that you choose. So now that you guys have learned the, your character's buttons and everything like that, you're now ready to move on to movement, okay? Movement is super important in Blaze Blue. Well, I should say that with any anime fighting game. Anime fighting game, uh, games, it's super important to learn movement with your specific character. Um, it varies between uh, between uh, every character in the roster. Uh, some characters may have a lot of movement options, some characters may not. 
Some characters have some of their buttons, like some of their moves consist of movement. Some characters just have regular joystick movements as their um, movement options. Um, there's characters with dashes, there's characters with teleports, and there's characters with runs. It all depends on which character you pick. Some are better than others. For example, um, some have pros, some have cons. For example, Nine and Azrael do have some sort of invincibility because they do have a teleport dash, uh, which an invincibility means if you try to hit them while they teleport, uh, it will whiff because technically they're not there uh, because they're teleporting. <laughs> so it's kind of crazy. And then there's some characters that um, that don't have dashes or runs at all. Uh, actually, one character is like that. That's Tager. That's because he's a grappler. So his only movement options is walking forward and also jumping. And that's it. And there's also characters like Ragna, which have runs. Uh, they also have... Uh, just small dashes like this and also jumping. So, but there's more characters with more movement options. So that's a really, really important thing to learn in Blaze Gate. What is your character consisting of, you know? Uh, can they run? So they can close gaps really, really uh, easily. For example, if you're playing a full screen game, you can just run to them and close the gap between your, you and your opponent really fast. Is your character, uh, can your character only dash? Uh, I know that characters like Valkenhayn and Hazama can only dash. They can't run at all. But usually those characters with limited move, uh, movement options have certain special moves or even their drive moves that make up for that movement option. And then they use those moves for movement option instead of the, uh, the joystick movement. So figure out what your movement options are learn them master them a uh, good way to do it just go, to go into training mode and just practice the movement on your own whether you're on pad or on an arcade stick i know it's a very basic thing to say to learn the movement but it's super super important sometimes you you're in a match and you freeze because you're like oh wait where do i go and uh, it's easy if you if you know all your movements and stuff uh you can just run under or dash under how to close a gap is a really important aspect of this game too so Now that you guys have gotten the general gist of your character, movement-wise, button-wise, now it's time to learn some combos with that character. A really good way to learn combos is to go to Trials Mode. I, I heard a lot of people talking trash on Trials Mode, saying that they're not optimal, they're not, they're not, uh, not optimal, I'm sorry, they're not um, practical and such. And for the most part, it's true, but doing Trials Mode and doing them over and over, this is how I learn characters, by the way, guys. I'm going to let you in on one of my secrets. The way I learn characters is I do their trials modes over and over and over until I get the the combo system down with that specific character. Like, for example, with Ragna, it gives you a certain trial. It gives you a certain trial, and you just do that trial over and over and over until you can just pass that trial, no problems. You can come back the next day and just pass it. You're good to go. You have learned a combo. There you go. Um, I do that with every character that I learn. So trials mode is good. Um, I know a lot of people don't like trials mode because uh, sometimes the combos aren't practical. And for the most part, yes, it's true. They're not very practical. But the beginning challenges are really good for people that are learning the game and also are learning that specific character. So that's a good way to do it. Also, another way to do it is to look online. Uh, YouTube is your best friend when it comes to this type of stuff because YouTube has a lot, a lot of videos in terms of combos um, and in terms of people playing that specific character. Um, and because you learned your character's buttons and you know what that button is, you can label, though, oh, that is 5C, or oh, that is a Hell's Fang button. You know, you know what your character's button is. You can kind of see from a match. It's like, oh, that's this combo. And then you can write it down or try and replicate that combo. Um, you can also look up combo videos, like I said. And sometimes some combo videos leave the notations for that specific combo. I'm guilty for doing combo videos and not providing notations. I apologize. But um, for the most part, YouTube, Internet is your best friend. And also Trials Mode is your best friend. Uh, some really beginner-friendly combos with Ragna. For example, consist of, you know, just uh, A, B, C, uh, A, B, C, and then Hell's Fang. Real simple stuff. 
But once you get those combos down, excuse me. Had to sneeze. <laughs> um, once you get those combos down, you can start expanding with your combos with your character. For example, you can do 5A, 5B, 5C, uh, 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, and get some more damage with that. And then after that, you can start adding extra buttons, for example, and get some more damage. Just like that. You have to, all these combos, you do need record to, you need muscle memory, you need some getting used to uh, when you first pick up this game. Because the combo system in this game, it is a really combo heavy game. So it's important to know your combo, know what you're doing with that specific combo and all that good stuff. And get some muscle memory down for it. So, definitely learn some bread. And th th what I'm, I'm explaining to you guys, these are called bread and butters. Bread and butters are your, um, you know, your bread and butter. That's uh, that's what it is. It's it's the thing that you know best. The thing, your go-to combo. This is the combo that I'm going to put on this guy. And I'm not going to drop it because it is the go-to combo. Um, Ragna has really pretty good ones. I mean, like that one does 2,000 damage by just pressing for a four hit combo you know what I mean especially with a button such as 5b really far um, so yeah learn some bread and butters practice them in the training lab and uh, once you have bread and butters once you have one or two three combos then you're ready to kind of go out into the world and get some experience but that's for another time I'll let you guys know All right, so now that you guys have learned your movement, your char your character, your buttons, some combos, you've learned all that good stuff, it's time to kind of compile that all together into one big package, okay? This is the most basic thing that you need to do. You have to compile this into the package and uh, make it a part of you. Build some muscle memory. I know I've said muscle memory a lot, but that is really, really important when it comes to uh, fighting games is getting the muscle memory down for a certain combo, Working on training your own mind for uh, when you get the the hit. That means that you get the combo. Training your mind to do all that stuff is really important. So how do you do that? Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, one of the ways is, of course, to look at other players using your specific character and figure out, like, oh my gosh, how how is he doing this? You know, how is he opening? Um, when I say opening them up, that means they, they're getting the hit on the character and uh, they're beating up on them. Uh, that's one of the ways to learn from other players as well. Uh, also, but with uh, when you want to train yourself, that means you have to go into online. You have to go into versus. You have to go into arcade and learn and just learn through that. Get some experience down with your character. Lose. Seriously. I go. I Seriously, I encourage you guys to go out there and lose. And I don't usually say that too much, but I say that because if you go out and you lose, that means you're doing something wrong. And that means that you have space to grow. You're going to grow if you if you keep losing. It's a it's a part of fighting game life. When you lose, you lose you you learn a lot more either from yourself or from the pl the player you're you're actually playing. Um so Go out there, lose, get some experience there. If you win, perfect. Hey, you won your match. That's awesome. If you lose, it's okay. Uh, you're still learning, still learning experience. Um, play other people, play a different variety of people, play the same people. Uh, it's good. I One of the things I love doing is playing against someone uh, at one period of time and then some time passes and they come back and they're better. It's one of my favorite things. Um, they come back and they're better. Usually the first time they, they challenge me, they lose. And then when they come back, they're just, they're a lot better with their character, with their fundamentals of the game. It's great. And that means that they have lost a lot or have learned a lot from previous experiences and previous ass beatings, ass beatings, as I like to say. So that is one of the things that you really need to, you guys need to do. If you guys get your booty handed to you, that's totally fine. I remember when I got my booty handed to me, it was really, really hard at first. But that's the way to learn fighting games. That's the way of fighting games. And uh, 
So yeah, so hopefully this has helped you guys with the very beginner basic things. Uh, I will be making more tutorials like this. Don't you guys worry. Um, more coming your way. I'm going to be doing the game mechanics. I'm going to be doing act the actual meta game. Um, all that good stuff. When to burst. All that stuff. This is just an introductory video going into the actual series of uh, getting better at Blaze Crew. So hopefully you guys have learned something. Uh, in the comment section below, if you guys would not mind telling me what I should be talking about. What are you guys struggling with the most? Why don't you guys let me know? Now that I've given you this introductory um, tutorial on Blaze Blue, what do you guys want to learn about? What to do in certain situations, meta game, character matchups, combos, um, anything like that I will talk about. Thank you guys for watching once again. I love you all. Um, hopefully this will encourage you to play more blaze blue. We'll see you guys in the next match Peace out everybody